The Hopkinton Public Library celebrated their one-year anniversary this past weekend. The festivities kicked off on Friday night with the Books in Bloom display created by the Hopkinton Garden Club. Yeah, it's, it's been a really big, I just sent an email to all the staff today saying, we made it for a year. <laughs> um, it's been just an amazing year and very busy and people have really responded to the building and the library, which has been just great. Um, so this, this weekend, um, Tonight is the, the Books in Bloom opening that we're filming this at now. Uh, so we have eight displays that have been made by the Garden Club members um, that will be going up around the library in different locations. And they will be in the library through approximately midweek, the 31st of October. Um, there will be a scavenger hunt starting tomorrow. And if you find all eight displays in the library, then you can get a coupon for a free book at the Friends Book Sale, which takes place November 2nd and 3rd. Um, and then tomorrow, uh, the trustees will also be doing cider and donuts in the morning, just a little drop-in, fun thing. The foundation will be revealing the Thousand Homes for Hopkins and Donors plaque at 11.30. And we have Steve Spector performing at 2 o'clock in the afternoon to celebrate this building. And we will have tours with the trustees on the hour from 10 to 2. All right, terrific. And um, would encourage the uh, Garden Club to get involved and do these displays. They just told me we'd like to do it, and I said, great. They did this last year when we opened, so we're hoping it's going to become just an annual regular thing. And I think it's just a really nice way to bring two groups that don't necessarily seem to have a lot of common together to do something that, that does connect them and to make the library beautiful um, in a new way for a few days and you know just bring the community into the space in a new and different way. And I can believe it's already been a year. No. It seems like it just by. <laughs> it's, we're all kind of just looking around like, really, has it? I mean, I've only been director for a year and a couple months now, and um, it went so fast. And we have done so much, and we still have so much left to do that we're really excited for. We're working on our strategic plan. Um, we are you know, working on continuing to expand and modify what we're doing to serve the community better it's been a real ride and um, it's been a lot of fun so, all right yeah. so uh, people can come anytime between the 27th and 31st to mm -hmm. participate in scavenger hunt yes we are open 10 to 4 saturday 10 to 8 monday 10 to 5 tuesday and 10 to 8 wednesday but by that point yeah. they may be starting to come down so i advise getting here by 5 on tuesday all right well uh, thank you very much and sure. congratulations yeah. on the one year anniversary well, thank you so much then on Saturday, there was some cider and donuts and a Thousand Homes for Hopkinton plaque dedication hosted by the Hopkinton Public Library Foundation. Since 2013, hundreds of Hopkinton families and local businesses joined 1,000 Homes for Hopkinton by giving or pledging $1,000 to the library project. <laughs> Thank you all for coming today to our reveal of the 1,000 for 1,000 homes for Hopkinton plaque. Um, we are so excited to have this after so many years of um, hard work, and the fruits of our um, our work now have been open for the past year. As you all remember, 1,000 1,000 homes for Hopkinton Library harkens back to the the first days of Hopkinton Library when Hopkinton did, had a library but no physical building. So 14 amazing members of our community banded together to uh, raise the money for this gorgeous granite structure in the 1890s. And those 14 families each contributed about $1,000 on average. And we thought that was just such an amazing commitment to reading and education and, and it, and a wonderful resource for the, for the town, we thought that we would emulate that with our program, 1,000 Homes for Hockington Library. So you, the individuals and families and businesses of Hockington, over 300 of you contributed $1,000 to be a part of 1,000 Homes for Hockington Library. And thank you all so much. <laughs> In addition to that, another 30, more than 30 families and individuals and businesses also contributed an amount over $1,000, um, at $2,500 and up to $100,000 to have a naming opportunity as part of this beautiful building. 
So that raised all together with the 1,000 homes and with the naming opportunities, you all raised $700,000 for this building. Thank you so much. We're here specifically today to look at the new plaque to commemorate all of the hundreds of families that have contributed. But I also want to invite and encourage you all to walk through the library today to look not just at the plaque but at these naming opportunities. There are stainless steel plaques throughout the building. And in particular, what we would like to do is for you to talk to a member of, one, of um, Hopkins Public Library Foundation. We would love your photo with you, your family, um, your group with these plaques and we want to do a photo gallery of everyone so we can put on our website. So please stay for a few minutes after. We'll do pictures with the plaque with families. In addition to that, we'll go around to the individual um, plaques in the library to take pictures so, um, so that we can commemorate this day for years to come. Um, what, I, what I would like to um, do next is have a couple of our um, families that have um, been a part of the naming opportunity to say a few words about what this means to them and, and why they contributed. So first I would like to introduce Russ Ellsworth. Uh, like Laura says, my name is uh, Russ Ellsworth and uh, the Ellsworth family in the library have been connected since 1955. So you, you guys can do the math, that's about half the time that the library has been in existence. But before I talk about the Ellsworth Connection, I just want to commend and thank Laura and, and all the other uh, Library Foundation uh, uh, members for that they said they were going to raise a million dollars. They raised that plus. So I just want to give them a round of applause. <laughs> and, and, and I also want to thank the uh, friends of the library who do a, a lot of work and raise a lot of money. I want to mention the, the uh, library directors who were instrumental in, in, in doing this and getting this building done. It all started when Carol Walsh was the director, and then Rona Kassain, and then De Deb Irvin, and finally Heather Backman is the current library director, and she, she oversees this whole operation. And I would be remiss if I did not mention my favorite people at the library. I'm a volunteer. You can see me here on Tuesdays. <laughs> Come on in. I'll take you for a tour. Is the library staff. They yes. know that. They know that. They are my favorites, and I love working with them. Now, back to the Ellsworth Connection. Uh, my mother started here as an unpaid volunteer in 1955, and I was just a mere lad of 12. And she, and she, in about 1960-61, she became the a part-time assistant director. And in 1972, with the retirement of, of Betty Strong, the director who that room over there is aptly named for, uh, she became director and stayed on until her retirement in 1991. And after that, when Rose Lavelle became uh, interim director, she, she again volunteered, and she finished her career as she started her career as an unpaid volunteer. So that, that's, that's how much dedication she had with the library. And, and for myself and my family, uh, my wife Mary Lou and I were, were on the original Friends of the Library in the late 70s, early 80s, it was, it was a while ago. And, and uh, we did a lot of luck in the books, uh, before the elevator, by the way. And it, was, it, was, it was either up, up the bulkhead stairs or up, up the in, inward stairs. And anybody remembers that, that thing went around like this. So it wasn't an easy job, but we were younger people. <laughs> uh, we did that, and, and I served as a trustee from, uh, from 1995 to 2007, and and from 2000s from that time on, I've been a library volunteer. So, so in, in total, it's been about 63 or 64 years that that we the Ellsworth family's been uh, associated with the library. And in conclusion, if my mother was here, she, she would say, "Come on in." Ask your questions, enjoy the library, because it's a great place. Thank you very much. I just want to ask a 
uh, Victor Dion, who's another uh, member of 1,000 Homes, and also his family opted to do a couple of naming opportunities. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, we are, uh, we've been in town for six years, so a little bit less than <laughs> these guys. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when we were thinking about um, this and, and having that conversation with our family, you know, we try to teach our kids to be responsible in spending. Well, we don't really have to teach them how to spend. They're just going to do it anyways. Um, we want them to save money, obviously invest it, but an important part of our family is sharing that money. And when we share money, well, we share that with community. And then when we think about what's important to our family, there is pets, because my wife and my family, they just love pets and adopt things. And we believe strongly in education and community. And I think the library really sums up that great thing about community and education. Um, we have young kids, so in town, I'm not known as Victor. I am Gina's husband, or Caitlin, Kara, Ryan, and Henry's dad. And, and so we spend a lot of time at the library, not only to you know, be here, rent books. Um, I travel quite a bit, so I always come in and get audio books. And so I try to take that with me on the road, but also at the same time when we go on family trips, we'll come to the library, get some audio books, put it in the car, and we'll just have a great time listening to books. And so we love it, and, and also being a neighbor of Katie's, and we heard about this opportunity, and we just absolutely wanted to support it. And so this is just a little way for us to be able to support this cause, and, and hopefully for many years to come, we will come to the library and enjoy it, whether it's a laptop lab or, or just the kids section. So. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, now I want to pass it on to John, uh, Selectman John Cortino, who is also a member of 1000 Homes for Hopkinton Library. This place keeps getting better and better. Every time I come in, it's just, it, it continues to grow. Um, Hopkinton is the marathon town. And um, as my pin says, and as we've trademarked, it all starts here. And it seems like that this is what Hopkinton takes on and on uh, in many uh, aspects. You know, we, it was said we want to start a, li a new library. And a lot of people got together and made it happen. We have an, a, a, a new cultural arts center, a new DPW facility. When, when Hopkinton says they're going to do something, everybody pitches in and we get it done. We're a great town for that. And, you know, and, and it's, a, it's, it's a long process. And people really dedicate themselves with their money, their time, and their, t and their sweat. You know, I, I'm, I'm speaking for the Board of Selectmen, but um, I remember here, uh, former chairman, who really pushed us. And Ben was, ben was um, uh, the spearhead for the Board of Selectmen several years ago and said, we've got to get this done. And we all we stood behind him and, and got it done. And, and Ben, really, thank you very much for, for doing it. Uh, you know, to the Delbridge family, Middlesex, the directors, you know, everybody really thank you very, very much for giving this town a, a crown jewel, something to, to build our downtown around. You know, it's, 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 we're already seeing it in, in, in new businesses coming to town. The, the homes right around the downtown are, 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 are growing and getting better and better. Values are going up. People are moving in. Schools are getting great. It's, it's just fabulous, so thank you very much for everybody, everything everybody's done. It's getting better and better. Thank you. In just a minute, I just have a, a few more things to let you know about, and, and one is um, about Hopkinton Public Library Foundation, is that you know we're a core board of nine people, um, including Scott and seven other members who are here. Do you all want to raise your hand or? Yay. And um, we are still um, active in the community, and we are still here to support the library and work in conjunction with the Friends of the Library and the trustees. We are very much still um, supporting the library and supporting the, the mission and any sort of financial support. We are going to continue to do that for the next few years or the foreseeable future. So we just want to let you know that we are still here in support of the library. And we're so honored to be here now that We've mentioned it's been exactly one year since the library opened. And I just want to draw attention to the fact that business is booming. Um, they said if you build it, you will go up 20 or 30 percent. 
Hopkinton has blown those numbers away by far. And in particular, the gorgeous children's room, this beautiful young adult room has um, really brought in the youth and the children in our community. And we are super proud of that. And um, as everyone here has, has spoken and agreed that it really is a community center for people of all ages. So we're super proud of that. Um, and then the last um, piece, I'll turn it over to Scott Richardson, who's going to give us our toast before we actually take a look at the plaque. So uh, again, thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you, Laura, and the foundation, and the trustees, and the friends, everybody <coughs> who did Yeoman's work. And uh, again, another uh, uh, kudos to Ben. Um, as we were getting down to the wire, he actually did have to take a member of the planning board out into the hallway and <laughs> convince him that, in fact, this project needs to move forward. So again, without his uh, tutelage to that member, uh, we may not be standing here. Well, we probably would be, but uh, it was just an example of leadership, uh, really exemplary leadership. So as Laura said, uh, we are going to do a toast. Uh, so oh, thank you. So if people want to, this, this is non-alcoholic, so uh, uh, if anybody wants to grab, grab a glass, uh, please do. And uh, before the unveiling, we're going to, again, have a one-year uh, anniversary toast to the library. Again, a, a crown jewel in the downtown and for the whole town, obviously. So cheers. Cheers. cheers.